7 News time is 648, and David White is here from New York Sea Grant. And uh, as you made the joke earlier, you're not thinking you're going to Boston where it's uh, rain falling and stuff. Yeah. But uh, Always want to be prepared. That's right. Be prepared. We're got to be prepared. We're here to talk about safe and clean boating, and that's why David is here. So we have uh, some things to talk about, and, and the reason that you have this stuff with you and what you're wearing is because you want to be prepared on your boat, right? You want to be safe. What are Ab some things you're Absolutely, and as my daughter always says, I'm always making a fashion statement, so I thought I'd leave this you with Beth for her to are. use throughout Thank the rest you. of the morning Thank show. You. I appreciate that. I, I knew, I knew that would be the case. Orange is my color. I'm always a fashion statement waiting to be made. There it is. <laughs> Um, and, and, and we do Fashion laugh about flash. that, and, and when it does come to boating, and I'm wearing this one because this is the old, bulky, ugly yeah. kind of life jacket. Everybody has them on board, um, and you need to have a life jacket on board for everyone on board. Right size, good condition, be able to wear it. Um, so they need to begin checking right now as they're getting ready for the boating season. Do I have enough life jackets on board? And are they the right size? everyone should know where they are. Everyone should know where they are, and they should be accessible. On right. my boat, it's right here. I, I don't wear it all the time on my boat. Most but people don't. It. But I can grab it if something happens either for myself, my kids, or other yeah, members of the boat. What about kids? Do they have to have it on? Kids under 12 have to wear a life jacket. It has to be fastened like this one is, mm -hmm. um, unless they're down in a cabin. Um, or you're anchored or docked at the time. So they have to have them on. No one else has to be wearing them at the time, but they do have to be accessible and in good condition so you can grab it in case something and happens. And how do you know they're the right fit? Um, they're, they're sized. They'll stay right on them. And the best thing is to just you know put it on, make sure it fits snug, um, and then you know if they don't have to wear it, they can take it off after that. And always remember, if you're having guests come for the day, you have to have them the right size for them. Right. I, I, I'm guilty of that as well. I had four friends coming and all of a sudden realized I didn't have an extra one on board for their child. It is your responsibility. It's your responsibility. Yes. And if you get stopped, you're the one that's going to be ticketed because you don't have the right life jackets on And more importantly, it's there for safety. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's how most drownings occur is they're not wearing a life jacket, mm -hmm. so it's the best. What else do you have here in front of you, Dave? Um, just some other things to, to touch on real quick with folks they need to be thinking about. And all boats have to have some uh, pyrotechnics on board or a flare. Right. And I always remind people, flares have an expiration date on it. Oh. They only last for about three years. Okay. Um, I have like four sets on my boat. I just leave them. But when they expire, you know, if, if you get boarded or checked by the Coast Guard or, uh -huh. or state police or sheriff, the first thing you're going to check is are they of the correct date? If not, you may have them, but you're in violation. Oh. Um, okay. Having other safety gear, first aid kit, um, remember pollution prevention that we've talked about before, mm -hmm. clean boating, clean and safe boating, having a build sock on board, when you're fueling your tank, having a nozzle bib on board. So taking full account of what's on board the boat. Um, and also remember what waters you're in. Yeah, um, that's the thing up here. Yeah. So you have to know if you're in international waterways or if you're in American or Canadian. Uh, how do you know? Well, um, international waters get very tricky because if you do cross the international water line, you are in another country. So you have to have all of the proper material as well that you cross the border. Mm -hmm. um, most importantly is to be thinking about are you on U.S. federal navigable water, which is connected bodies of water, or state only. So if you're on an inland lake, you need to have the New York State Boaters Guide, which outlines all the rules and regulations and what safety gear. If you're going to be on Lake Ontario, the St. Lawrence River, and its tributaries, then you need to make sure you have all of the federal Hmm. Information, they're they're pretty compatible. You might want to make sure you just have everything from both, <laughs> and then uh, you're it's, safe. It's the best to do because yeah. the other thing in here it says this is what's required, but most importantly, what makes good common sense. And right. as we often talk about coastal issues, it's what makes good common sense. Some people may say, you know, I don't necessarily know, and and they'll give me some leniency if I, you know, if if I, if I don't have it on board. I, is there that leniency, or usually is there a ticket given right away? Is, is there a warning? With um, this stuff, you know. It's law enforcement right. that can give you a ticket at any point in time if you're in violation. But they're also there to help you and to try to make sure you they are safe. They can say ignorance boating. is no excuse. That's absolutely <laughs> true. It's not, but they are really there to help you conform and be thinking about it. You know, if you got boarded and your flares are out of date, are you going to get a ticket? Sure could, but maybe not. Maybe what they're going to say is, but hey, why don't you say, head hey, back into shore some. and go get some so you have them. Right. So you don't head back to shore and make sure you're safe and ready for the day. But you're here to tell us, just check it all. Just check the it all. The start of the season. Best time of year to do it. And I'm a real proponent of working with your uh, local power squadron and Coast Guard Auxiliary to have them come and do an exam of your mm -hmm. boat. It's free. They're happy to come out. They'll go through your boat with you. If you have all That's the safety great. gear, they'll give you a sticker to put on your boat that you've complied with the laws for this year. Um, if you have any problem, they'll say, hey, got to go get new flares. I'll come back next week, make sure you get your certificate. And that's what they're to do, is just make sure you're all safe for the upcoming boating season. All right, that's very great. good. Dave, thanks Thank for you. coming in. Always good to see Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Good to see you, too. Back in a couple Beautiful of months. Beautiful outfit. <laughs> you can leave with us.